Back in 1993, the World Foundation for Natural Science began to warn the world about the dangers of microwave technology. And today I'm glad to say that I'm joined by scientists and microwave expert Barry Trower. Barry, thank yes, you for joining us. it's my pleasure. It really is my pleasure. I understand you have a wealth of experience with microwaves. Can you begin by explaining to us how you began your career in microwave technology? Yes, of course. Um, in 1960, I was in the Royal Navy, and I, I worked partly with the underwater bomb disposal unit, partly with microwave warfare, and some of the other time with radar. Microwaves were involved in all of those three different areas. So, whilst I was in the Royal Navy, I trained in all aspects of microwave technology uh -huh. and as anybody will tell you that's been in the forces uh, the training you receive is second to none uh, you you practice it you talk about it all day you sleep it um, so since 1960 I have been involved in all aspects of microwave technology after that uh, a part of my job because I had microwave expertise was to question captured spies during the Cold War when Russia and America were within seconds of global nuclear war and microwaves by then were really sophisticated stealth weapons and a part of my job was to find out from any spies who had been captured uh, what the current knowledge was in that part of the world. Since then I've taught advanced physics which of course involves microwave lectures and technology. I was commissioned by the Police Federation to write the safety report on their microwave equipment twice the last one was the updated one, and I have had a series of papers published which are all on the internet, and currently I travel the world free of charge, uh, trying to advise governments, councils, people, royalty, anybody, about the sensible way to use microwaves and not the dangerous way which involves children, animals being harmed. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> just for the benefit of people who aren't fully aware, in what walks of life nowadays could you expect to encounter microwaves? Microwaves are used instead of radio waves for all communication systems. Uh, your mobile telephone or cell phone uses microwaves. The microwave towers are almost on every street corner. Along the motorway you have the emergency services, microwave transmitters. Yeah. Microwaves are now everywhere. And microwaves succeeded radio waves because Microwaves will penetrate buildings, that they will go through concrete, brick, anything, whereas radio waves won't. You need a, an aerial on the roof for radio waves, but for microwaves you don't. They will just go straight through your house. And of course what people don't understand is if they're going straight through your house, they're also going straight through you. And is that dangerous? We're told by the government that they're safe. <clears throat> Is there scientific proof to show that they're not safe? There are some 8,300 papers, to my knowledge, going back to 1971, where it was proven in government documents that low-level microwaves will cause injury. The main symptom for microwave sickness, it is usually... Uh, suppression of the immune system first, followed by neurological problems where the brain is being affected, depression, suicidal tendencies, 
you will have more colds, more coughs, longer colds, longer coughs. And then at the other end of the line, if you are unfortunate, uh, lymphoblastic leukemia or something in that area, uh, it affects, in order of uh, people, <clears throat> it is always the embryo and children who are affected most seriously and first, followed by women without being sexist because they have very complicated hormonal systems uh, that are affected by microwave technology. Uh, then usually the sick and the elderly and finally fit young men. So th there is in fact an established pattern for microwave sickness. Uh, um, you mentioned cancers. Are we seeing an increase in the number of cancers? Oh yes, and, and going back to your previous question, there is absolute proof there are, to my knowledge to date, there are four High Court judgments proving that low-level microwaves will cause cancer. There are 12 epidemiological studies showing that people who live around transmitters, particularly within 500 metres, will get more cancer, more neurological and psychiatric illnesses than people who don't. And there are, to my knowledge, 19, 20 if you count my latest one, there are 19 published legal judgments, not high courts, but legal judgments from mayors, councils, magistrates, ordering transmitters to be taken down where it is believed that they have caused cancer to the local population. So there is lots of proof and two of the epidemiological studies, and by that I mean for anyone who's not sure of the word, a study for about 10 years studying all of the doctor's records, all of the populations. <clears throat> Two of them were carried out by the industry itself on its own product. And its own conclusion was that these microwaves can cause cancer. So uh, there is plenty of proof, uh, government proof, legal proof, research proof. Uh, there is enough proof as to win high court cases and people are. Can I just clarify <clears> that? <throat> um, the industry's own research has shown that their product, mobile phones, Wi-Fi, transmitters, cause cancer. Oh, absolutely. Um, it, it's the, the most famous one was the ECLOG, known as the ECLOG report. And their conclusion, it was carried out by T-Mobile, and their conclusion was that these microwaves can trigger the cancer promoters and cancer initiators in the body. And the industry's, one of the industry's other research projects showed that microwaves affected children to the point where children would lose sleep because they can activate the brain. The microwaves can accelerate and activate the brain. And children would lose sleep and published research in Scientific American Mind actually shows that when children lose sleep, they can become depressed and suicidal uh, very, very quickly. In fact, I can tell you one story, if I may. Yes, when I was in South Africa uh, speaking, a teacher of 30 years uh, and this is on the internet. <clears throat> a teacher of 30 years was the speaker behind me. <clears throat> and he said that in, in South Africa, he said childhood suicides were unknown. Mm -hmm. Misbehavior to the extent of severe aggression was unknown in South Africa. And he said as soon as the transmitter went up near his school, they started to have psychiatric problems with the children and he said today, he said all of my children, all 30 in my class are now on Ritalin for poor behaviour. 
That's the whole incredible. class is on Ritalin. That's incredible. Uh, Absolutely. <clears throat> I'm almost speechless. Mm. Um, so we have the industry admitting that their technology is causing disease. Cancer. We're seeing, and illnesses, yes. we're seeing children being effective in, in hyperactivity. Yes. Why then do we still have this technology? What, what's stopping it being removed? The industry is believed to be earning some three trillion United States dollars a year. <clears throat> three thousand billion dollars a year. And it is my opinion, I will have an opinion because it protects you legally, it is my opinion that when you have that amount of money coming in, I mean just imagine on a daily basis how much is flowing in. Yeah. <clears throat> you have the ability to not only hire Land Rovers full of top lawyers who can argue cases for you, you can buy governments and you can threaten people uh, with all sorts of things because you have so much power and the allies of the industry are the secret services of the governments, hence the governments. Because with this technology, not only can the secret services of any country listen to every single thing you are saying through your cell phone, but they can also follow everywhere you go. So they know everywhere you go and everything you are saying, and they can monitor the words of every single meeting that you sit down at. You're, so, you're not seriously telling me that my government is following everybody's movements? They have the ability to. I do know that every single phone call is recorded and logged. Every phone call? Every single mobile phone call is recorded. Every single one. They have, whether they are interested in you, I don't know. Okay. Whether they want you followed, I don't know. But they have the ability to do it. So if you have, <clears throat> let's, let's just say you have um, people who legally and rightfully oppose government policy, like me. Yeah. <clears throat> what they can do is they can have everywhere you go followed, every single phone call recorded, they can monitor everybody you talk to, so they will know your whole operation which gives them an advantage if they want to clamp down on you. This sounds worse than the so, Watergate scandal. Well, it is. So, I mean, you have the secret services, you have the money. The government themselves love this system because it allows them to snoop on the people. And you have the most powerful industry on the planet so you can see why people are resisting cutting down the power and cutting down what they're doing. And it's probably worth, uh, we know 3% of populations always become seriously ill from microbes. It may be worth <clears throat> the money and the advantages to the government uh, to lose 3% of the populations for the benefits that they are going to get. 3% of the population of the UK must be quite a large number. Well, it's, it's about 1.8 million. So 1.8 million people will be sacrificed so that they can snoop on everyone and, control, and, and take and, control of... And take in the money. Uh, I mean, a colossal amount of money. If, if you think, just the population of the UK, 60 million people, and we know we have 60 million cell phones. Mm. <clears throat> Imagine each cell phone, the bill is just one pound a day. Yeah. That's 60 million pounds somebody is making a day, and, and the bills will be much higher than that. 
I, I mean, yes, the, yes. The, the money and the, the power you get from this is, is phenomenal. And in fact, if we go back 15 years, hypothetically, yeah. if we could go back 15 years, <clears throat> if the government said in any country, if the government said, we are going to make it law that every single person carries a little tiny box in their pocket. We are going to listen to every single conversation you have, every business meeting, every consultant meeting in a doctor's surgery. Every single word you say, we are going to record. Whether your phone is on or off, we have the ability to record. We're also going to monitor everywhere you go. So we are going to know everything you say at everywhere you go. Ah, but there is an advantage. Apart from paying us, which you won't like, you do have the ability to push a few buttons and talk to somebody. We will, of course, listen to it. There would have been riots in the streets yep. to say, we are not having this. But the marketing was so clever that it's gone out and people are paying them to do this. I mean, you must admire them, you know, for the cleverness that, that it's got out. But this is the problem. <clears throat> and, of course, they're addictive. Chemically addictive? Do, do they cause the release of hormones in the body? Or they are or? Um, electrically... The, the, the average person works on the lowest level of energy. And if there is a telephone box half a mile down the road and you have a cell phone in your pocket... The average person will pull out the cell phone and say, well, this one won't hurt me. Dong, 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 dong. Hello, Mr. Smith, rather than walk down the road. Yeah. So there is that. You become more lazy. The other addiction is that there are numerous experiments. I have pages upon pages of experiments where the microwaves going into the brain, they accelerate and if you like, increase the natural rhythms of the brain. It's called entrainment. <clears throat> they actually accelerate the brain and excite the brain. And we know that a child that uses a cell phone for just two minutes, the brain is accelerated and not back to normal for two hours, around two hours afterwards. And that's wow. just for two minutes. Now, you imagine a child in a playground at a school that spends 20 minutes on the cell phone. The brain is not going to be in a learning state for the rest of that period of the day in the classes. The child is probably going to be hyperactive, misbehave... And a general pain. And a general pain, yep. Those... <clears throat> And is that something you can see on the EG, EEG? Oh, you yes. You see a change in the brain yeah. waves? And, and I, it, it is guaranteed. Um, I have pages upon pages of this type of experiment. It's so easy to do that most people in the, this research area have done it many, many times. And anybody, anybody can do this. <clears throat> Just... Don't expose your brain to any microwave cell phones or anything for a couple of hours. Take an EEG, take one from your heart, an ECG at the same time. Make a call for 10 minutes yeah. and take another one. And then see how long it takes your brain to come back to normal. You'll be absolutely amazed. The delta, theta, alpha, beta brain waves, you'll be amazed how long it takes them to come back to a normal state. Wow, this, this technology is truly frightening. Really frightening. Well, this and is why it, it's microwave weapons yeah. uh, were, were introduced <clears throat> from the 1950s, 60s, 70s to the present day. Um, and this is another level of proof they are so effective, if you're not in a hurry to get rid of somebody, they are so effective as a stealth weapon to yeah. beam somebody, and this is, has been done many times, and it's recorded, uh, 
you can beam people you don't like as a government to give them cancer, breast cancers, neurological illnesses. Uh, you can choose what you want them to get. You can choose? Oh, you can choose. <clears throat> you can choose which pulse frequency you want to affect the brain with. You can, choose, you can choose the level of microwave irradiation and the speed that you want them to become ill. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, it, it really is a perfect stealth weapon. And all you need to do is rent a house opposite someone you want to get rid of or a group of people you want to get rid of and just beam them. It, it, the most famous case during the Cold War was the Moscow embassy siege where in Moscow, they beamed the entire American embassy and gave them cancer. Did they cause cancers in all the staff or in a lot of the staff? Or? Most of the staff, the children, most of the children got leukemia. The women developed breast cancer. The gentlemen uh, developed cancers. I, I think after about 18 months, the entire staff was changed. And then the following 18 months, the entire staff was changed again. And by that time, people realised what was going on. And they found that they were being irradiated by microwaves. And rather than say, oh, isn't this disgusting? What have we sunk to? They thought, isn't this wonderful? Let's develop this for ourselves. And governments today are still perfecting microwave warfare. Still to this day, they're working <clears throat> on the weaponry. Still to this day, 2010, they are still perfecting the pulse frequencies. Uh, it, it's got very, very sophisticated. Um, the pulse frequencies, the, the, how long they can transmit, whether it can be one country to another, bouncing the microwaves off the ionosphere. So you don't even have to be in the same country. Bouncing the microwaves off the ionosphere, a lot of people won't have heard of this technology. You're talking about the harp. And you, if you have a super transmitter, uh, the microwaves, if you beam them, it's only simple basic trigonometry. Yeah. But let's say um, I want to bring uh, economic ruin to a country that grows all of the world's wheat. <clears throat> okay? All I have to do is beam microwaves up to the ionosphere, which is like an invisible cloud around the planet, an iron cloud around the planet. The microwaves going up at a set angle will, will reflect uh -huh. off down onto this country. And if I continuously beam the wheat in this field, or the cattle, or the sheep, I can harm, I can reduce the immune system of the plants so that uh, they won't be healthy and they will die, and I can stunt their growth, and I can bring economic ruin to that country. I can harm all of the animals, the cows, the sheep, uh, it, it's so easy to do. You only have to push a button uh, and you can bring economic ruin to a country. Which countries have this technology already available? Is it all the countries in the world or just a couple of them? It may not be a wise thing to, thing to say um, on a live broadcast, um, but you can take my word for it that... I know at least two super transmitters in the world that have this capability. And there are probably more uh, in areas that I do not have access to uh, and I cannot go to. But I know there are at least two. I need to just go back a little bit. Now. Of course, yeah. Um, <clears throat> back to your early days in the military. Mm -hmm. This technology was used by the British government. Oh, okay. Sorry, I can see where you're going. It was, it was right. used okay. by the British yeah. government um, um, against terrorists. We we have we have eight thousand three hundred papers <clears throat> um, 
I, I have knowledge of 2,300 myself. And what the governments found was that you could induce, by, by changing the, the pulse frequency, <clears throat> uh, like Morse code, of the microwaves going into the brain and interfering with the brain, by specialising on the pulse frequency, you could induce psychiatric illnesses to the point where a psychiatrist could not tell if it is a genuine psychiatric illness or an induced psychiatric illness. So what you can do, theoretically, is you can target an individual's brain they may have auditory hallucinations where they hear things, which, which is actually quite common with microwaves, <clears throat> or show signs of schizophrenia. For instance, 6.6 .6 pulses a second can induce severe sexual aggression in men. So you, you could induce somebody to commit a really horrific sexual rape um, so, uh, technically, what you could do is have somebody committed to a psychiatric hospital or a jail for a crime just by somebody saying that they had a psychiatric problem, whereby they didn't. Yeah. There, there is that. You can target other parts of people's bodies. You can target the heart and cause heart seizures. You can target, target the lungs and cause bleeding. Uh, you can target, if you're clever enough, um, some of the essential glands in the body that control all of the hormonal systems. <laughs> so if, if you have dissidents or people that you don't like as a government, it's very, very easy these days to irradiate them and either have them wind up in jail or, or in a psychiatric hospital. And of course, there is no comeback on you. Yeah. Now, these weapons that the governments have and are still using, are they more powerful than, for example, the Wi-Fi I might have in my front room or my cordless phone or a mobile phone transmitter? No, in, in fact, they're, they're actually the power is slightly less. Less? The power is slightly less. Um, the, the difference is, <clears throat> where you might use Wi-Fi, you might go in after work and do a couple of hours and then leave. And, and the Wi-Fi is going out in all directions. Here, they are targeting you probably with a beam. And it is on you all day. It can follow you everywhere you go and it can target you when you're asleep as well. So you're really getting a concentrated dose. It's a, it's a bit like um, putting the light on in your house and sitting with the light, or have somebody follow you with a searchlight and uh -huh. beaming the searchlight on you all the time. So it, it's, there is a difference between that. But in fact, the power can be less. It just takes longer. So, so I would imagine then that the devices we have in our houses nowadays are extremely dangerous. All of the, not all of the research, because there is research that has been carried out where they have failed to show it is dangerous. But we do have documentary proof yeah. from the governments, <clears throat> one specific paper uh, from the government that lists all of the illnesses that you can get from microwave sickness, including severe neurological disorders. Uh, we have a government uh, document that actually says this needs to be kept secret from the Western governments because it will affect the efficiency of the military, uh, the weapons industry, and it will also affect uh, industrial profit. We have the government telling us 
This is, the, technology is this is the United States Defense Intelligence Agency advising the Western governments to keep this secret so that they can protect industrial profit and military functions. Because, I mean, if you're in the military yeah. and a lot of people do start developing tumors, um, you could start suing because the equipment you're using is not safe. So yeah. to avoid that and uh, to protect the industrial profit, uh, they put this document out. <clears throat> Go and back a little bit to children now, if we can just move away from okay. the military. We'll move away from the military, from the military for a okay. while. Um, why are children more at risk? Are they more at risk? Yeah, um, as I said earlier, that, that it's always the children that, that suffer yeah. first. Um, a lot of people make the mistake in believing that children are small adults. And unlike medication, where you have an adult dose and a children's dose, with microwaves, there is the adult dose, but there is no known safe dose of microwave irradiation anywhere in the world published for a child. And the reason is, <clears throat> and embryos are a, a special case after this, if, if you wish to ask about embryos. Um, if we look at the average infant in school, or small child in school, and I'll only concentrate on just a couple of areas of the body. Yeah. The immune system of a child a child has soft bones, so the microwaves penetrate the bones, no trouble at all. And microwaves are attracted to water, which is most of what bone marrow is. <clears throat> the immune system of a child takes 18 years to develop. And the first thing we know from microwave irradiation is that it attacks the immune system. So with children, who are not small adults, they are neurologically and physiologically immature adults. The immune system of children is being damaged before it is anywhere near up and running. The nervous system that runs through the body <clears throat> has 122 layers of protein there's a, a system of protein synthesis that lays 122 layers around the nervous system. It takes 22 years for this to fully develop. So all through a child's development, what you have is the microwaves affecting the protein synthesis of this system. Now, goodness only knows what's going to happen, we are probably going to get an epidemic of the muscular dystrophy type diseases later on in life for these children uh, because of a damaged myelin sheath or insulating coating around their nervous systems. The other, what I think is the most serious aspect of a child's development, <clears throat> excuse me, there are experiments that show the ovarian follicles in young girls. Now, unlike boys who produce sperms as and when they're required on a daily basis, young girls are born with all of the 400 eggs they are going to need to develop into fully blown eggs and children. <clears throat> now, we know that microwaves affect the ovarian follicles and can affect the ovarian eggs. We know that the microwaves, there are papers on this, can cause genetic damage. Now, if you think of a young girl at school 
If you think of a young girl at school, she's sitting here and she has the Wi-Fi sets yep. transmitting straight through the uterus into the ovaries. <clears throat> now, if the young girl damages the ovarian eggs, and we're not going to know this for another 15 years, if the ovarian eggs are damaged, these are irreparable. They can never, ever be repaired. The mitochondrial DNA in girls is irreparable. So when that girl, if she has a daughter, that daughter will carry the genetic damage that has been caused by the microwaves. And when she has a daughter, that daughter will carry the same disease and her daughter and her daughter. So we are now not saying we're risking this generation, we are risking the future generations of all of the children in the world from genetic damage. And that's a scary prospect. That's extremely, <clears throat> extremely frightening. It is, it is. So to clarify that, the eggs cannot repair the mitochondrial DNA. No. Nope. And so if a girl grows up with a genetic defect, she will pass it on to her daughter. Yes. And on, and on, and on, and on, and, so on, and, on, and on, until there is no more female line left in that family. That's and this is surely a good enough reason to remove Wi-Fi from schools and... Wi-Fi should be wiped out of schools at a stroke, today. Why, why To protect they? all of the children. <clears throat> Why are schools persisting in Wi-Fi if, if they know it's a risk? Ignorance. It's what I call intentional ignorance. Uh, it seems that uh, government ministers that are trying to promote the telecommunications industry and governments, and it's not difficult in our country, the UK, to find a school where if every child has their own Wi-Fi that they can walk around with, when the school inspectors come in, they get extra ticks in extra boxes. Yeah. And it, it, it's what I call intentional ignorance. Um, they will only look at and believe the research they want to. They, they will not acknowledge most of the real research and most of the risks. Uh, and this is why I think we have this problem. There is, there is such a, a pressure on advertising and hype to get this technology and then this technology and this technology. I can remember, <clears throat> I can remember when I was a child, our king, the king of England, I can remember our king encouraging people to hold smoking parties uh, because it was good for you. We, we seem to be in that situation now. People believe that if you get the latest technology, it's going to benefit the children. What they do not do, and I call them silly boys, <clears throat> and I'm being disrespectful, I think our Prime Minister and certainly the head of MI6 and our, our Secret Service, and I really hope he gets to look at this, they are so young that when we were making major decisions on the dangers of this, they were wondering what their nappies were for. And they have now got into the position of power, but they, they don't have the intelligence to come back and talk to people like me and say, look, what's the truth behind this? They listen to the government advisors who are usually people brought in from the industry. Uh -huh. And they believe that the government advisors are right. And I have yet to find a government advisor 
to make a single sensible sentence anywhere. And, and I will defy anyone to show me an intelligent sentence from a government advisor. Uh, there, there seems to be <clears throat> so much what I call blind corruption, and you know as I do, we have just got rid of possibly the most corrupt government the world has known. Mm. Uh, and is it any wonder that we are in this situation? Uh, and, and I blame the Prime Minister and the head of MI6 uh, in my mind, because they are too young, they are too ignorant, and they are too silly to come to people like me and ask what the truth is. That's all we want is the truth, really, isn't it? <clears throat> would, it you, is. would you like to speak to the Prime Minister <clears throat> personally? I, as soon as we had the new government, I went straight along and saw my Member of Parliament. I gave him a document with all of the references uh, listing every danger there was to the planet, the ecosystems, the environment, children, embryos uh, that we haven't yet discussed, and I'm yeah. sorry, we should have come back to that, to my fault. Um, I, I asked him, and I said, in case he thinks I'm just a total nutter and mad, I want to see the Prime Minister, I want to explain this, I want to take with me a consultant solicitor, I want to take with me a doctor from Imperial College, both whom are experts in radiation law and radiation, and I would like to see the Prime Minister. And to cut a long answer short, the Prime Minister does not have 20 minutes to give me in the next four years. And I think that is pathetic, absolutely pathetic and disgraceful. I agree. Do they have any idea of what sort of damage they're doing to the world, to children? To no, and this is where I come back. To me, they are silly boys. <clears throat> you have the Prime Minister who is young, you have the head of MI6 who is young, you have these what I call young boys with no disrespect to their age coming out of university with these electronic degrees and they think, aha, I can make a microwave box that will do this and do this and they sell them and they go on the market but they don't have the wherewithal to come back to people of my generation that grew up with microwave radiation to say, well, just give me one hour of your time before you do this and let me explain what is really going on. Would you like me to go back to embryos? Or do you I would just like <coughs> to say, <coughs> okay. is there a cover-up on the numbers of cancers that we're seeing related to microwaves? Um, the word cover-up... I would not agree with, maybe I would, I, I maybe I'm, I'm not clever enough to understand the full implications. There is certainly uh, statistical anomalies uh, whereby I have one document where 40,000 in one year, 40,000 brain tumours were re-diagnosed as endocrine cancers. So they do not go on the brain tumour statistical list. So what the industry can actually say, and the government, is, OK, so you're using a phone, but look at the mobile phone brain tumour statistics. They're actually going down. And I know one person that said, this proves that they're actually preventing brain cancers. That is most definitely a statistical anomaly. Yes. Um, so 40,000 brain tumours in the UK are reclassified. Whether they're in the UK, the document didn't say. Um, it probably did, but it's a huge tome. Um, and I cannot be sure whether it was one country or several countries. 
Um, I just know it's from a brain tumour registry, and I, I just know that 40,000 are being reclassified as endocrine cancers, and the brain tumour registry is horrified by this. But I could not be specific whether it was just one country. Okay, and that would obviously skew the statistics <clears throat> if those 40,000 brain tumours are in the stats. It would be fairly blatantly obvious to most people that mobile phones are causing brain cancers. Oh, it's, it's only half the story. If you look at some of the studies where they have uh, shown that there are no cancer rises from transmitters or mobile phones, what the industry and the governments are very, very good at doing is they will do a study, they will write up the study, they will give it to the press, the press will publish it. What they do not do is what I have to do. If I write a research paper, <clears throat> for instance, I, I've, I've had one, I, I've just finished one. You then send it to an independent magazine for peer review. The independent the magazine, they have said to me, we will now take about eight weeks with our experts to go through every word, every reference. If we deem it okay, we will publish it. If not, we will send it back for something to be rewritten. Now, what the governments are good at doing, one government scientist will peer review another government scientist's own document uh -huh. um, or a government will go to a university with specific instructions for the university to carry out a specific experiment but what they do not do is send these experiments to an independent top level magazine like nature and say we found this will you publish it what they will do is they will give it to the press. The press bring it out the next day. Cancers are going down. Mobile phones are found to be safe. But then when you get hold of the paper, <clears throat> and this was one particular experiment uh, on mobile phones, and you find they discounted everybody under a certain age. They then discounted everybody over a certain age. They discounted people who used mobile phones for work. They discounted people who had two. They discounted people for some other reason. And in fact, you ended up with this particular paper, you only ended up with 16% of the total people that were being tested being on the statistics. And then when you enlarge this 16%, it's like saying, we've looked at 16% of the people in Germany and enlarging it for the whole population and saying, you know, cancers have gone down. You know, it, it's easy to, you, you can manipulate statistics yeah. until you go blue in the face. It, they are so easy to mess around. But what they will not do is send their results to a magazine, the, a world-leading magazine like Nature or Scientific America or Scientific American Mind and have them independently peer-reviewed and published, like, like I have to do. Yeah. So in other words, you're saying, <clears throat> A, they rig the experiment or, well, make the experiment very favourable for themselves mm. and B, they cherry-pick the statistics? Not necessarily. There are some genuine experiments that have shown that microwave irradiation has not been shown to cause illness. And I can explain this. Uh, we're in Germany now. If I made every single person in Germany smoke 20 cigarettes a day and drink 10 pints of beer a day, some people would have no effect, some people would have some effect, other people would be violently ill. People are not homogeneous. They do not all follow the same path. And so you can concentrate on people. There will be experiments where 
the majority of people have not shown an ill effect. But when you look at all of the experiments, in fact, we know, we looked at the World Health Organization database a couple of years ago on all of the experiments, the ones that showed nothing and the ones that did show things. <clears throat> and the overall result was that 80%, 8 out of 10 of the papers on the World Health Organization database showed from low level continuous microwave irradiation cancers, an increase in cancers for people living near transmitters, microwave sickness and neurological problems. Eight out of ten. And there will always be experiments done properly that show nothing. But overall, eight out of ten do show something. So if the WHO's own library of, <coughs> of research shows that eight out of ten studies confirm that mobile phones, Wi-Fi, cordless phones, etc., etc., are dangerous, what is their stance then? The World Health Organization were challenged by the European Parliament to make a decision on the health of the world concerning all of this. And in the written reply, which I have from the European Parliament, the World Health Organization said that they will not comment on the effect on adults until 2015. They only started studying children in 2009, last year. So they will not be able to comment on the effect on children, possibly for another 15 to 20 years. So the World Health Organization will say nothing on adults until 2015 and nothing on children probably until 2020, 2025. So there is absolutely no guidance from the WHO. So the implications of that are your children could be getting very sick but we won't be able to tell you for another 15, 20 years. Absolutely. Good luck. Absolutely. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Yep. That's it. <clears throat> kind of startling, really, isn't it? It is so horrific that if it wasn't real, if somebody wrote a book on this, I would say this is so stupid, you could never make up a story like this. But, and it all goes back, it goes back to the 50s, the 60s and the 70s when microwaves were found to be such a perfect weapon and so dangerous to the military that the United States Defense Intelligence Agency told the Western governments to keep this quiet. And they did. And this is why we have... We have documents that show that governments pay people to experiment on people against their wishes. Well, not against their wishes, without even telling them. So, and, and we have all this information going back to 1976. Everything was known by 1976. Everything. We needed no more proof, no more research, nothing was needed in. You see, when, when in, with the industry or a government says, wow, this could be quite a problem, we will carry out research. What they're actually saying is, we really know what it's going to do, but what we will do, we will run some research. That gives us another 15 years. So we will come back in 15 years' time, and then they've bought themselves another 15 years mm. and if it's like the last research <clears throat> so many countries disagreed over these statistical analyses of what was going on that the whole experiment the worldwide experiment was considered null and void so 
once they, they brought in the statisticians, the whole of this experiment that lasted 10 years, or not, if not 15 years, was just wiped out successfully. Okay, Barry, so we know that microwaves damage children. What are the effects on developing babies and on embryos? Embryos are a special case uh, for two reasons. One is that they are the smallest type of human being. And with microwave irradiation, generally for the communication system, the smaller you are, the more radiation you absorb. Because the nearer you are to the size of the aerial that would receive it. And the embryo is specifically the size that can absorb quite a lot of the radiation. <clears throat> that is the first thing. The second is, <clears throat> excuse me, the second is, uh, and I'm going to use an analogy here uh, because I think it, it points out uh, what the real problem is. If you could imagine, I'm going to talk about the embryo's brain. If you could imagine <clears throat> leaving here and going back to your house and picking up a magic telephone book that had the telephone numbers of every single person in Germany. Now imagine you pick up a telephone book of every single person in the world with their cell phones, home phones, every office phones, every single person in the world. And then imagine you could push a button and all of these telephones would be dialed at the same time. That is roughly the number of connections going on in an embryo's brain every single second. That number. Wow. It is a phenomenal it is a phenomenal amount of connections with the most incredible accuracy. And if you then imagine, if that's just the brain, what about the spinal cord and all of the organs? Now, <clears throat> if you expose an embryo to microwave irradiation, what you are doing is you are giving the brain thousands of millions of minuscule electric shocks every single second. So if a pregnant lady uses a cell phone, the microwaves are going into the body, they will travel through the body, straight through the embryo, and if it's an ordinary cell phone, you would have roughly 1,800 million electric shocks a second, every second going through the embryo. So they are a very special case and the world should really take note that embryos, whatever happens, must be protected from microwave irradiation. And what is, <coughs> what is a safe dose for an embryo to absorb? There is no safe dose of microwave irradiation for any child anywhere in the world. No safe dose at all, not one. There is no safe dose. Um, it, it's a bit like, theoretically, passing a cigarette in to the womb and saying, have a smoke. Uh, you know, it yeah. is that dangerous. So what laws do the governments and the mobile phone industry hide behind? What usually happens, um, if they want to come and put a transmitter outside your house or on the corner of your road or somewhere, they will usually come along, they will usually say, we follow the ICNIRP guidelines, which is the International Commission for Non-Ionising Radiation Protection. They say, we are well within the ICNIRP guidelines, uh, we are well within the law, there is nothing you can do about this. Zonk, there it is, 
live with it. <clears throat> but in fact, they are lying. Uh -huh. They are lying. Uh, I have travelled all over the UK and all over the world, and I have never yet met a single decision maker that has read the international certificate. Not one. And yet, they will decide planning issues. You can see hospitals with transmitters above the maternity ward. Yes. Um, I've never met a single person that has read it. <clears throat> well, I have. And on page 546, it specifically says that decision makers should take special account of children, the elderly, the sick. It says that some people may be especially sensitive to microwave radiation. So before any transmitter goes up, what they should really do is a survey of the area to find out how many children there are, how many pregnant ladies, how many elderly, how many sick, to find out whether they're going to affect them. And on the next page, <clears throat> it specifically says that decision makers should read current scientific literature, up-to-date scientific literature, and they should set an exposure standard which is below the threshold currently known to be causing illness from microwaves. What they will do is they will come along and they'll say, and I can guarantee what they have said, they will say, these are radio waves, there's no problem, we've had radio for years, we're well within the ICNRP guidelines, zonk. <clears throat> and that is a lie. That is a lie. What they should show is evidence of looking at the population, evidence of reading, and why they set the level that they have set, but they don't. They set the maximum level which is allowable within the International Commission's guidelines, and all of them are set usually to the maximum, the maximum guidelines. Whereas, in fact, they should set a minuscule level if they have read the papers. And they should show, they should show evidence of reading. It, it, you're, a, you're a doctor. Yeah. Um, if I came to you and said, show me evidence of your research, you would show research papers, books, writings, calculations, um, and convince me that you knew what you were doing. And, and this is what the planners would do. And if they have lied, then there may be a good legal argument for having this transmitter taken down. It's, it's entirely obscene that they put these things on hospital roofs when the ICNRP says the elderly and the sick <clears throat> can be affected. They I, tend to target, uh, and if you look at this, people will say I'm wrong, but I don't believe I am. Um, have a look where most of the transmitters are. They tend to be in areas where people need money. They will choose the poor areas around cities because they know that poor people do not have the means to take on the most powerful industry on the planet and fight them. Yeah. Hospitals are desperate for cash because the government keeps them poor. So they go on hospital roofs. Schools are even more desperate for cash because the government keeps them poor. So you will get them in school playgrounds because the industry will come along and say, this is safe, they're only radio waves, here's a nice check, zonk. Colleges will have them on the roof because they're poor. Universities will have them by the hundred because universities are desperately poor. <clears throat> so have a look and you will find that most of the transmitters are in areas where people are poor. You will be very hard pressed to find one in a wealthy person's garden. What I wanted to ask you, Barry, was who drew up ICNAP and do they have any connections with the mobile phone industry? 
there is a large body of government scientists and if you look at the list it's been published it is there is a large body of the same scientists that sit on our government advisory panel the international commission panel the world health organization panel so it is largely the same scientists and they have very bomb-proof qualifications <clears throat> and when you have a Sir Professor standing up saying I do not believe there is proof for this that is all the councils need yes. you know, compared to somebody like me um, that is all the councils need and they will say well we'll go with Sir Professor um, but you, you will find it has been published but you will find the same names appearing on the same lists. Thank you. So from a legal point of view, is there any way that people can have transmitters removed? Have you had any successes with having transmitters removed? We have had successes with having them moved, uh, and there are several legal arguments here, and I'm not trained in law, so I'm assuming that what I say is, is correct. There are a few legal arguments. <clears throat> Some of the decision makers say to the populations that they are not required to consider health in planning decisions, especially the UK. That contravenes the European law. There are two European laws which say health must be considered and it must be a major consideration. There is a United Nations law under the United Nations Charter, number 22, that says persons with disabilities, i.e. electrosensitivity, people who are sensitive to microwaves, they cannot be discriminated against. So if you go to a road and you go, zonk, there is a transmitter, I'm sorry that three in a hundred of you, and it may not be three in a hundred, it may be the Irish Doctors Association who are uh, an in incredibly clever and knowledgeable uh, a group of doctors uh, and are really tip top when it comes to radiation they believe it may be as high as 15 in 100 so when the industry puts up a transmitter and says I'm sorry you're electrosensitive you're just going to have to suffer or move under United Nations law <clears throat> that is illegal they cannot do that and we have the drawn up in this country the Nuremberg Treaty <clears throat> and the Nuremberg Treaty was signed by all of the nations of the world and it is a very specific treaty and what it says is that no human being will be experimented upon without his or her consent and before they give consent they have the legal right to understand all of the implications, the health problems, the future health problems, and they have the legal capacity to say no. And where this is relevant here um, is that... Uh, sorry, I, I've, I've, I've lost my train of thought. You're going to have to cut this bit out. <clears throat> Um, the, the Nuremberg Treaty, there is only one exception with the Nuremberg Treaty, and that is a doctor such as yourself may experiment on his or herself only. That is the only exception, it is section 5. So no human being is allowed to be experimented upon. Now, what the World Health Organization have said is that 
They are watching the adult population to 2015, the children's population from 2009. They are watching to see how many cancers, how many illnesses, how much neurological damage. It is a scientific health medical experiment. And in their wording, you can read that it is an experiment, the wording they gave to the European Parliament. So what I would suggest to countries or people, they can, and again I'm not trained in law, but I would argue that they can invoke the Nuremberg Treaty and say, I do not wish to be a part of this global experiment. We signed the treaty and therefore you are breaking international law. That is my interpretation of what can be done. There is also one environmental law <clears throat> which very few people know of. I think it was published in 2004 but seemed to have been lost and buried. But it is definitely there. And it's a very good one. It actually says that anybody who damages an environmental water supply, a habitat, an environment, any animals, any nature conserve, conservatory, what's the word I'm looking for? Any nature area. conservation area, sorry, any, any nature conservation area, <clears throat> they say that is against European law now to damage any ecosystem, any environment. It is against European law. And it says the causer will pay the principal. In other words, if we have caused the bees to die, the crops to fail, the farm animals to die, the whole of the reparation bill can be sent straight to the mobile industry if they are taken to court and it is proven in front of a jury that they are guilty. They can be made to pay the principal. And not many people know that law exists, but it is law and it exists, and I have a copy of it. You raise some very, very interesting points there. Not least the disappearance of the bees, the colony <coughs> collapse. Are they linked to the mobile phone industry? Yes, without a shadow of a doubt, and I'll tell you why. Uh, there are numerous papers now from beekeeping professors and scientists, and there are even there is a brilliant mathematical paper which I read. That everything about the poor bee uh, is designed to be irritated by microwaves. The distance between the antenna, the size of the brain, the size of the body, they will all suffer resonance or unnatural vibration from microwave irradiation. The immune systems will collapse. The directional finding mechanism of the bee is destroyed <clears throat> but what the industry and the governments will say is that not a single bee has been killed by microwave irradiation and technically they are correct the same that we can say that not a single person has died from AIDS Technically, that is correct. What we do know from analysis of bees, uh, and we have the papers to show this, is that when the bees are found, they have five or six different infections, including invasion by the varroa mite. But when the, the blood and the body is analysed, they find five or six infections which clearly indicates that 
the bees have suffered massive immune symptom suppression and invasion by the varroa mite. The same that people suffer immune system suppression from AIDS and then it is whatever virus or bacteria comes along that actually kills you. But there can be absolutely not a, shrip, not a shred of doubt that microwave irradiation is disorientating the bees and the birds and other flying insects and there are 250 of them that pollinate plants. <clears throat> there can be not a shred of doubt that the microwave communications industry is responsible. And there is even, apart from the research, absolute concrete evidence of proof. <clears throat> you can go to any research paper, anywhere in the world, pick it up and look at the experiments that have been carried out on cells. And most of them have been carried out on small mammals, insects, birds, even bigger mammals, and they have found cancers, immune system problems, this, this and this. And it's documented. So and the problem is you have these huge laboratories and they say, well, we have found that microwaves will cause this and this and this, and here are all the list of the animals we used. <clears throat> but they forget one crucial sentence. They forget to say, aha, but these microwaves are actually outside the laboratory. And the animals are outside the laboratory. Therefore, we are going to damage the world's ecosystems and the environment because we've proved it here, now it's going to go on out there. And you can go to any research paper and you will see thousands and tens of thousands of experiments carried out on animals that show all of this and it goes on outside and there can be absolutely no doubt and we can take this right back to the government proof from the government scientists 50s, 60s and 70s. Why then do the governments continue to say it's the mites, <clears throat> it's a virus, it's a pesticide? I think, and I'm coming back to my silly boy mentality, I th governments are usually only in for four years and or five years and this is such a lucrative benefit for the people this is my own theory uh, I believe that certainly for the UK government and some other governments the ordinary members of Parliament uh, are really powerless because like when we've had members of parliament standing up saying we've had child cluster of leukemia cluster after leukemia cluster and I have a list of something like 200 clusters not 200 children 200 leukemia clusters around transmitters mostly near schools and the MPs have stood up and asked about this and at the end a minister stands up and says we are within international guidelines sits down and the whole thing is lost so I believe that there are people above the ministers maybe top civil servants maybe top industrialists I don't know but I believe they are the real power <clears throat> behind what is going on and they can direct governments and I really believe that the governments do not have a choice. It comes down uh, in a threatening way from people who really have power. Um, and I believe that is the problem. And we're back to my silly boy. When you look at our, the chief of our MI6 and our prime minister, as I said, who were wondering what nappies were for when we were making the real decisions, and they do not have the wherewithal to come and talk to people like me. And I'm sure if they did, 
we could change things, but they won't see me, and, and that's the way it is. Uh, and I think that is the problem. They are only in for four or five years. They can live with it. They will get their knighthoods. They will get their reward, whatever their reward is, and they will pass the problem on to the next person. And I think that is the problem, is that they are not directly accountable. They inherited the problem, they will reap some of the benefits, they will pass it on. They are not being held directly responsible. If we said, if there was a law that said every civil servant involved in this and everybody who makes a decision, if there was a single death from microwave radiation, we would have you in court and we would try you. And if you're guilty for manslaughter, you would go to jail. I'm sure they would change their minds. But they won't. <clears throat> they are immune. They can get away with it. They're only in for however long. And my impression, and I may be biased and angry and old and stupid, but my impression is that the leaders, they like to go around the world, shake hands, convince the world that they are making treaty after treaty after treaty. Not one of which has succeeded, but they, they take all the accolades and they come back uh, and, and they pass on the problem to the next person. Uh, and I think that is the problem with the government, is that they will not be accountable, that they are, they are immune from this. Thank you. Um, I read recently that, that the honeybee in West Sussex in England <coughs> is on the verge of extinction. What implication does it have for the rest of the, for the rest of the environment should the honeybee become extinct? It, it, it varies country to country. If you take a country like Africa that I was in earlier this year, they have lost whole fields and their fields can be the size of one of our counties. They have lost whole fields of honeybees. Now, the honeybee tends to pollinate vitamin C producing plants. So in countries like Africa that relies on its own produce to eat, they are going to lack vitamin C, which means they now run the risk of scurvy, which means they have to start importing vitamin C. Globally, if we were to lose all of our pollinating insects, it has been estimated that if the, and this was published in Nature, if the total world's ecosystems break down, the cost would be about 33,000 billion United States dollars a year on the price of food. So what would happen is food would become so expensive that the poor wouldn't be able to afford it. And in our country, what it actually means, if we lose the bee, and if we lose the bee, we also lose the other pollinating insects, because what affects one insect? actually affects all of the others right down to ants. <clears throat> um, if we lose them, we have to start importing food. Now, if I can give you an analogy uh, of how this would affect a country globally, and I know this to be correct. We're in Germany. So let's say that for Germany, we look at the situation for Germany from the telecommunications industry's effect. <clears throat> Let's say there are 60 million cell phones in Germany. And let's say the average bill is one euro a day. 
Germany is now losing 60 million euros every single day to the four main telecommunication industries. So 60 million is going out every day and that's not coming back. Now you have the medical bills of the people which is between 3 and 15 percent. The medical bills of the people who are sick that cannot work. Now you have Germany's share of 33 trillion United States dollars at its extreme end. So if you start looking at the price of food is going to rocket, the price of health care is going to rocket, and you've got this money flowing out, any child in, in the bottom primary school maths class if you say, here is your money box, this is what is coming in, this is what is going out, this is what is going out, and this is what is going out, any child will say, my money box, sooner or later, is going to be empty. And this is going to happen to Germany and any country in the world, and I don't care which country it is, at the rate you are losing money to the industry, at the rates that you are going to start importing food, the rate you are going to have your health care costs, which means importing more drugs, so the pharmaceutical industry are going to benefit on an enormous scale with the communications industry here. Any country, depending over how much time, has to go bankrupt any country, and I don't care who they are. And the added effect <clears throat> is the carbon footprint from all of this. <clears throat> it was shown that uh, a couple of years ago, uh, some scientists, and there were three papers published on this, and they all came up roughly with the same result. A couple of years ago, it was shown that the carbon released into the atmosphere needed to power all of the cell phones, all of the transmitters, all of the Wi-Fi, everything comes to about 110.7 million tonnes of carbon dioxide a year. It's the equivalent of 29 million cars every year going onto the roads. And <clears throat> what that makes now, especially with Wi-Fi going everywhere, they're trying to Wi-Fi entire cities, what this means is that the telecommunications industry produces more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere than the aviation industry it is the biggest polluter of the planet in terms of carbon dioxide and not a single word has been said against the tele telecommunications industry. We hear lots about not building more airports, not building more runways. In the United Kingdom, our government has said they're going to put seven pence or eight pence on each gallon of petrol to cut down the amount drivers are driving to cut down the, the carbon footprint but not a single word has been published by any government anywhere in the world against the telecommunications industry and the result of all of this carbon dioxide <clears throat> and this has been published in Scientific American this year and it's not just from this industry, it is all the industries. Carbon dioxide, uh, you're a doctor, you will know this, uh, carbon dioxide and water together produce carbonic acid. <clears throat> so the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere sinking onto the oceans and the seas, they have actually changed, they're not changing, 
they have changed the acidity of the oceans and the seas. And the microbes and the fish in the seas have a very, very low tolerance for the alkalinity and acidity of water. <clears throat> and what we are now doing is we are physically destroying all of the living species in our oceans and our seas and the telecommunications industry is the major polluter now and not a single person is doing anything about it to stop them. In fact, they're doing as much as they can to encourage them to make it worse. In London, the mayor has boasted that he is going to turn the whole of the city into a Wi-Fi zone for the 2012 Olympics. Now, other cities are also trying to be Wi-Fi. We're trying to get every single school, it seems, in the Western world, Wi-Fi. And all this can do is, is exacerbate the problem we have with the environment, the problem we have with the oceans, <clears throat> And the bottom line, and we have the proof, we have absolute indisputable proof, and it goes back to 1971, which is when we, we had it, and everything since has confirmed it. We had it, and what we are doing is we are physically destroying not just our children's health, by illness and genetic illness, we are destroying the health of the planet. We are destroying every living being from the largest mammal in the oceans to the smallest slime mold in the soil. We are destroying slowly, well, not even slowly now, we are destroying everything uh, because this industry is not being controlled by governments. And that is the problem. That has such far-reaching and massive implications. You're saying it's not just brain tumours, it's not just leukaemias. <coughs> We're talking about total collapse Absolutely. of our environment, all ec ecological systems collapsing. Absolutely. I mean, We're talking worse than nuclear war. Absol oh, much worse than nuclear war. Um, absolutely. Uh, uh, and as a doctor, you will know this, that um, when you look at human cells, animal cells, plant cells, even bacteria cells, when you look and you go down to the genetic structure and look at what the genetic structure is made of, there is absolutely no difference no difference at all between the, uh, at the atomic and nuclear level. There is no difference between what we are all made of. Every living thing in the oceans, uh, on land, every living thing is made of exactly the same small particles. So if you are damaging humans, and we had all the government proof we wanted in the 70s. It stands to reason that you're going to damage the animals that are made of the same, and the plants that are made of the same, and the oceans that are made of the same. You are going to damage everything. And I wish somebody in government would actually talk to somebody like me and credit where it's due some governments have sent for me and asked me to explain this and some royal families and leaders of communities and there are now countries in the world that are reducing levels and trying to change things but the western commercial governments uh, uh, the UK especially, uh, not only are they not trying to control this, but before our last government left a few months ago,
they gave the industry permission to increase its power threefold and we already had the highest levels on the planet. So they are encouraging the industry. Where these people think they're going to go and live when they have their knighthoods and all of this money and whatever other trappings, Rolls Royces and yachts they think they've got, um, where they think they're going to take them to live, I don't know. Maybe they haven't thought that far ahead. Uh, and maybe they should come and talk to us. But they are going to end up living on the same planet and their generations are going to end up paying the same price as our generations. Truly, truly disturbing stuff. Um. Would you like to explain a little bit about breast cancer and microwaves? <clears throat> breast cancer is not totally understood. <clears throat> Research has shown uh, that microwaves seem to induce uh, breast cancer in women but not in men, very, very rarely in men. Now, there are a, a few um, reasons we believe for this. <clears throat> we know that uh, from epidemiological studies, uh, and they have specifically said at the end of an epidemiological study is when they look at cancers, and in fact there's one here in Berlin, they said that there was a sevenfold increase in breast cancers in women. But most of the epidemiological studies you look at, they say there is generally an increase in eight different types of cancer, specifically breast cancer in women. <clears throat> and whether because the breasts are bigger than men, the mammary cells absorb more radiation, I have been told today by Karen that she read an article, uh, and I did mention this, uh, that the, the metal in bras, uh, the, the cups which are parabolically shaped in bras, they are metal. And women tend to carry the phones in, in a bag over the shoulder, which transmit straight through the breast. Your, your phones can transmit when they're on standby, but these days they can be made to transmit even when they're totally off. So assume if you've got a phone, it is transmitting all day and all night. Now, women tend to carry them over a shoulder bag, into the breast. Now, we know, and this cannot be disputed, that... Metal will absorb microwaves. It's why you, you cannot put metal into a microwave oven. Hmm. When the metal absorbs microwaves, it re-emits it straight away. So it's coming in and going out straight away. And it re-emits it at a slightly different wavelength. And we don't know what that wavelength is. I haven't seen a paper that has measured it. But we know it's being emitted. <clears throat> so what you have... And we know this cannot be disputed. We know that if the, the bra of a lady is being microwaved, the metal cups will be absorbing the microwaves. They have to do that. We know they will be re-emitting it in a parabolic focus. So what you will have with your cup <clears throat> is the waves will be reflected like a magnifying glass into a small area. <clears throat> so the area may be a few hundred or a few thousand mammary cells big. I would like to see, I know Karen said that there is a paper. I haven't seen one published. The research may be in for peer review. But it would be a very, very good experiment uh, for a PhD student uh, to do, send to somebody like Nature and have peer-reviewed. 
But theoretically, what we can argue is the microwaves are being reflected with a parabolic focal point somewhere in the mammary cells in the breast. And that is what we believe may be causing the increased breast cancer in women. Any epidemiological, epidemiological study will show that women get more breast cancer when they are microwaved, anyone. And in fact, a really good experiment, and you were there when I spoke, doctor, um, at Swindon. I mentioned a really clever study uh, carried out in Estonia where two professors, and this was published in the, the Australasian Journal for Environmental Health. It was published in there. They took a whole country, Estonia, and <clears throat> they looked at all of the cancers and all of the people and all of the health to professors. Then the mobile industry moved in. And then years later, they looked at the cancers again. And they found an increase of all of the main types of cancer. And their conclusion was that the telecommunications industry was responsible. And they also said a very interesting sentence, which I've since read in other papers, that women are more susceptible than men. A, because of the breast tissue, and B, because uh, women have much more complicated hormonal systems. The reason for which isn't scientifically fully understood yet. Uh, we're not clever enough to understand all of these miracles that go on inside the, the female body. But they are obviously being disrupted. <clears throat> and at the Swindon talk, uh, a councillor, a gentleman stood up and said, aha, that was probably due to the Chernobyl radiation drifting across uh, Estonia and causing the cancers. Now, I have never embarrassed a child in any of my classes in 20 years of teaching. And I did not want to embarrass this counsellor in front of a room full of people, so I kept quiet. But any senior school child can tell you the difference between cancer from plutonium, cobalt-60, uranium-235, uranium-238, and microwaves. Any child in my school class would tell you that. Now, if two professors, experts in radiation, are going to make that mistake, I won't believe it. So, we can rule out Chernobyl. Uh, and I believe that their conclusion is the correct one, and it matches the epidemiological studies. Women do suffer more from men. They do get, as we showed in Berlin here, uh, in Berlin, a sevenfold increase in breast cancer. We're not sure why, <clears throat> and the reason we're not sure why, if, if I may go on, is that no safety tests were done on cell phones before they were given to the general public. Not a single safety test was done. Like, unlike drugs or anything else, it has to pass a safety test. Not a single test was done. This is the test now. Every single embryo, every single lady, every single child is now a part of this global experiment which is showing what it is showing, that we are failing to protect the entire planet. And that is the problem. Uh, the only specification uh, in the UK, <coughs> excuse me, 
The only specification was that if you used a cell phone or lived near a tower, you would not get too warm in six minutes. That is the only legal European requirement. That is it. The World Health Organization, the ICNRP or the International Certificate, the only legal requirement is that you do not get too warm in six minutes. That is it. That's not a heck of a lot of protection. No, nope. and it was based on the, sadly, it was based on the radiation absorbed from the bombs dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima in World War II. It was based on calculations from there. <clears throat> but a very, very clever mathematician, and I have his paper, actually showed that almost every step of the way when they did their mathematical calculation with what we have with today's knowledge was incorrect. And the World Health Organization and the IGNAP certificate, their calculations for the six minutes are wrong. <clears throat> can I just clarify on the, on the wire in the bra? As far as I can see from my simple, simple knowledge of physics, the wire being curved acts partially like a, a section of a satellite dish, which has a focal point which focuses the Absolutely radi radiation correct. to a point, yep. rather like when you use a magnifying glass to set leaves on fire. Absolutely correct. I mean, the radiation will come out in all directions, but the part that comes out in the middle section, the middle of the horseshoe, if you like, you're right, it's like a satellite dish, and it will have the same focal point. If, <clears throat> and my wife won't mind me saying this, um, when a lady, and I hope I'm not being too personal here, when a lady gets a bra that is really, really comfortable, <clears throat> excuse me, they tend to wear it a lot because yes. it's comfortable. Yes. And if you're wearing the same bra all of the time because it's comfortable, you are then having the same focal point in the mammary cells week after week after week after week. Yes. So women should not wear a wire in their bra as far as you're concerned? As far as I'm concerned, I would not have wire in bras. I certainly would not if I were a lady. I certainly wouldn't carry a cell phone in a bag over my shoulder. I definitely wouldn't sleep with a cell phone beside my bed or a decked phone because they transmit all day and all night. If you have a cell phone, assume it is on. If, if I had a cell phone, I would carry it, carry it in a metal box or put it in a metal box and only use it when I needed to. Assume it's transmitting, but if I were a lady, I wouldn't sleep with one beside me, I certainly wouldn't carry one, and if I were pregnant, I would treat cell phones like cigarettes. I wouldn't let anybody near me with a cell phone if I were pregnant. You raise an interesting point there. Are you saying if you stand close to someone making a phone call, you're being subjected to passive radiation? Oh, absolutely. To passive smoking? Absolutely. They can have a range of two kilometers. And this is what people don't realize. Um, you could have a pregnant lady on the bus or on a train or sitting next to you, and you can pull out your cell phone and make a 20-minute call. And from an arc, that part of the radiation is going through the fetus. Uh, and people, it's like passive smoking. People don't realize it. You're, you're absolutely correct. And if you've got a person either side of you, and this is why uh, people are not being educated and why we are having this problem. Uh, and we, we're not just talking uh, the fetus in a human, the fetus in an animal, a cat, a dog, a rabbit, a bird, all, all the fetus will be affected. 
So if you have a decked phone or a, or a mobile phone in your house and an animal or a lady is pregnant, <clears throat> they are going to have continuous irradiation in the fetus. Uh, so what you, you, you really shouldn't use a phone or uh, a Wi-Fi. It horrifies me. I mean, supposing you have a student. I mean, uh, I teach advanced level students who are 16, 17, 18. Now, some of those young ladies are married or engaged and some of them are pregnant. Uh, or the teacher who may be a lady, may be pregnant and will be irradiating, her, irradiating herself all day. You may have a pregnant lady in an office block where everybody uses these days, they don't have landlines, they, they have these walkie-talkie things. Yes. And, and the, the worst thing, <clears throat> and, and I'm not going to name drop because it will be embarrassing, uh, but coming on to this, the worst thing that I have been involved in with ladies and pop stars, and, and I have been involved with a few, if not more than a few, pop stars. <clears throat> Watch lady pop stars. They don't carry microphones. They will have a transmitter. And they put the transmitter in the cleavage. And then they go on stage. And how many lady pop stars are we now seeing with breast cancer? Yeah. Other stars... They put transmitters, usually they conceal the transmitters and they're on stage. And they're very powerful transmitters, these. And how many pop stars or actors, actresses, theatre people are we now seeing <clears throat> with tumours? I have been called in to give uh, scientific documentary evidence with quite a few theatrical stage pop stars with tumours. Uh, and when I explain the proof from microwave radiation and I say, where do you keep your transmitter? And how powerful is it? Show me what, what the power is. How long are you on stage for? How often? How often are you on your mobile, which is about 20 hours a day? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and and it, it's, it, it horrifies me that, that uh, and we, you and I can think of certain pop singers this year that have gone down with breast cancer. Uh, it, it's now not unusual. Yeah, but it's very common now. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, and, and this is one of the things that, that horrifies me is that apart from the fact they have no knowledge, it's the, the accumulative <clears throat> effect of people not respecting or not having the knowledge if they see a pregnant lady not to use, not to text or not to use their phone. And you even have pop stars on stage saying text me all at once and you text something to go on a screen and, and I see comedians who say text questions and we'll pick them up at the end and you've got the entire theatre texting all at once yep, that's going to be dangerous. now so if you've got a pregnant lady there and you have th thousands of people all texting all at once you might as well take the embryo out and put it in a microwave oven and put it on fry for two minutes. It, it's that serious. Mm. And then we wonder why we have all of these deformities and miscarriages and problems. Uh, and there are several pop stars now where texting, te everybody texting the stage is a good idea. Barry. The police and emergency services use a system called Tetra or Airwaves. I've read a lot about this system. There's been lots of complaints. People are getting sick near the transmitters. 
Is it a good system? It's a very interesting question and a very good question. I was initially called in and commissioned by the Police Federation to write the first report, the first safety report on the Tetra communication system, which is now on the internet. <clears throat> I condemned the system as far too dangerous for two reasons. One, that you have, they tend to carry the system here and it is transmitting through the brain and through the neck and some of the police do 14 hour shifts. And secondly, the pulse frequency of Tetra, which is around 16 pulses a second, is too close to the brain's natural frequency, which is 17, just over 17 pulses a second. The natural frequency, the beta frequency of the brain, is responsible for making decisions in emergency situations. And if you mess up that, you cannot make decisions. And the very job of the police, the ambulance and the fire brigade is to make emergency decisions in emergency situations. And you are affecting that one part of the brain that they need. The other danger of that particular pulse frequency is that it is what's known as the cyclotronic resonance frequency of the calcium in the body. <clears throat> now what that means is that as the tetra is going through, the calcium is being knocked from the surface of cells and the calcium keep the cell stable. The calcium is replaced by potassium, which only has a single bond as opposed to the calcium's double bond and the potassium will cause the cell to leak. And I think we now have something like 18 experiments showing this. <clears throat> so you now have what's known as calcium efflux, or a calcium leakage in officers wearing Tetra. I said it is far too dangerous, A, because of the pulse frequency, B, because of the microwaves, going through the neck and the brain, and it, it should not be allowed. <clears throat> the chairman of the police federation and the staff who commissioned me to write a report, the chairman retired. He was replaced by a lady who sacked me, said I didn't exist, said I wasn't commissioned to write the report, called a conference, that I was allowed to attend, but not allowed to speak. Uh, she called a conference and her opening words were, nothing is going to stop Tetra. The government doctor stood up at the same meeting and said to the police union, if you don't like it, resign. That is your choice. And that is in fact an illegal thing to say. This is illegal. But that was it. Um, they published papers to say I didn't exist and that I'm mad and I'm wrong and everything else you can read about me. And recently, only this year, another union that represents uh, mostly the ambulance and the fire brigade, but some police officers, usually special branch, they commissioned me to write an updated report. And in this report, which the first report is on the internet, this report, which was highly confidential for the legal department of the union, I quoted our government scientist saying how much you can expect to develop a brain tumour compared with the radiation you are getting for an ordinary person. <clears throat> and that's based on what is known as average use. And you'll probably be surprised to learn 
that average safe use for a mobile phone is considered to be about 20 minutes spread over a whole week. Now, police officers have these for 14 hours a day. So when you start looking at the maths, and my first degree, I specialised in nuclear and atomic physics. Now, when you look at the maths, what the chief government science officer is actually showing is that today we could have as many as 7,000 plus lady and gentleman officers walking around with slow growing tumours. <clears throat> they are not told of the warning of this, they are not told of the dangers, they do not know the risk they are taking. They do not know that there could be 7,000 of them with slow-growing tumours, and they will only find this out when they come up to retirement age. And this is the government's figures, not mine. I actually had it at slightly less. And this is being kept from them. 7,000 tumours, which is absolutely incredible. I wrote an open letter which anybody can read on the internet. <clears throat> it's open letter to the Police Federation. And I said, this was last Christmas, and I said, in the last three months, I believe, I have had five lady police officers come to my house, all independent of each other, and they have all had neck tumours where the transmitter is <clears throat> and when I say to them have you approached your federation they all say they cannot because the federation will not help them they are victimized they are bullied any police officer who raises this is very heavily brought down by senior officers and threatened with being moved, uh, threatened with losing their job. Uh, there, there are bullying tactics from the government and the senior officers on the officers. <clears throat> and the Police Federation published a document that I have referenced in my latest report, and it actually says, we know that this system is now dangerous and causing these ill effects. But as it is up and running, we cannot do anything about it. And I think, well, why are the police paying you to represent them if you're not? And the other thing I find incredible, and I've got the documents for this, and I've referenced them, in this document, <clears throat> a government document actually says <clears throat> that a scientific experiment should be carried out on the police and the emergency services because they are all young, they have a well-defined work pattern, they are fit and they will be ideal for an experiment to see how much cancer and how much brain damage is caused by this system. And they actually say we cannot rule out that some officers will develop cancer and some will develop brain damage from this system. And then we get another message, which I've also got, that says we welcome, this is from our government's radiation board, we welcome the study that you have set up on the police officers. <clears throat> so they are a living experiment for cancer and brain damage from this system. And the government have written it, put it in writing. And we have sold this system to, to my knowledge, 30 countries. 
Now, this is going to take place in 30 countries around the world. They are going to find the brain damage and the cancers without being told. And I think that is a crime. That is truly, truly horrifying. Uh, and this is the Tetra airwave system. And my report, the original report is on the internet. My open letter with documentary proof of most of this is on the internet. The highly confidential paper I wrote for the union is not on the internet, but it probably will be soon. <clears throat> uh, but that is the situation. It is now, it has been sold to 30 countries using the British police as the finest police force in the world. This is the finest police force with the finest system. Uh, buy it. And this is the power of money and what I call spin, or as I prefer to call it, lies. But every country is going to suffer what we are now exposing our officers to. Our fire brigade, our ambulance service, the MI5s, the MI6s, the government bodies. There are, I think in the UK... 52 organizations that are now using this system uh, and 52 organizations theoretically in these other 30 countries the coast guards um, the security services the 52 organizations that have to tie in with the police for emergency work uh, and if you look at worldwide um, it's 30 countries, I can't do the maths, I'm too tired now. 30 countries, probably 300,000 people using it in each country, if you look at the 52 organisations. Um, 7,000 in each, probably, according to our government's figures, developing tumours. It, it, it's, it's beyond belief. I, I, I mean, like you said earlier, it, it's worse than the atomic bomb. Much worse. And uh, the truth will come out eventually, not in my lifetime, uh, but it, it will come out. But that is the situation, and what I would like, and this is happening, what I would like is for countries using this system to read the reports I've written on it before they make a decision or before they go ahead is what I would like. If they think I'm wrong and they want to use it, fine. But what I would like is you show what I've written to your officers and what the government say to your officers and if nothing else, let the officers credit them with the intelligence they have. Let the officers say, yes, we want to take this risk, or no, we don't. And that is all I've ever said to any of the emergency services. Let me publish an article for the officers to read. You publish an article, let them vote. It's not difficult. Let them vote. And if they don't want it, whatever they decide is final. If they say, we don't like this, there are systems, there are systems used by other European police and emergency services that have nowhere near the risk of this system, Tetra Airwave. Uh, and just say to them, here is, here is one point of view, here is another Tell us what you want. <clears throat> and the unions are doing what they are paid to do, which is represent their officers. And that is all I've ever asked, it is that people be given a say. The same with Wi-Fi in schools. We make the truth known to the parents. And we say, I could write the truth in 240 words. One side of A4. The industry 
or the governors write their side, the parents and the children read it and they have a vote. Do you want it? If they say, we want it and we want to take the risk, I don't have a problem with that. But when the truth is concealed and they are lied to, then I have a problem with it. And this is what is happening with the Tetra airwave system. And I know they have lied because our MPs have stood up in Parliament and said, this industry is lying. They have said lying in Parliament and I've got the document. So we know they are lying. We know they are liars. And we know that the senior officers somewhere in the police are complicit with the industry. I don't know why they should be protecting their officers, but they're not. And that is all I've asked for. And this worries me about the Tetra being sold to the 30 countries. So to summarise, mobile phones, cordless phones, Wi-Fi, that entire telecommunication <coughs> system is not only causing cancer and deaths in children, in adults, but it's also destroying the ecosystems, it's killing the bees, it's responsible for destruction of our oceans. Exactly. It's the biggest threat to this planet we have ever seen. You're absolutely right. And what we need is we need the industry to be controlled. There is a level that the industry can function. It won't be totally safe, but it will be acceptably safe. It will not be safe for pregnant women. It will not be safe for children. It's like having motor cars on roads. We know every year there are going to be deaths. It's like having aeroplanes. We know every year so many are going to crash. There is a level which is acceptable. And let's be honest, cell phones can save lives. If you are a lady and your car breaks down on a dark road and you have a child in the car or you're pregnant, you can pull out a cell phone, dial a number and they can be there. There is, there is a use for them and I would not like to see them go. <clears throat> but at the current level, it's what I call blind corruption with intentional ignorance from senior people. People are being lied to and money is being made at the expense of children and people becoming ill and dying. The solution is to have a workable system that the entire world will agree and the level, of, the level has already been found. We don't have to think up what it is. The Bioinitiative Report has already come up with a level. <clears throat> a level that the nearest person to a transmitter must not exceed. So if there are two transmitters, they have a half of that. Four transmitters, they have a quarter. But the nearest person must not exceed that level. And all we need now is somebody clever enough and brave enough to be able to say to the world, look, this is what is happening. We all have to live here. And this is the danger that is going on. Let's have an international agreement, one that actually works where globally not a single person anywhere in the world is exposed to more than this bio-initiative level. And in fact, since it was agreed on, 
A lot of scientists are now saying, no, no, it has to come down by a factor of 10. So already they are questioning that it's too high. But let's settle with the bioadditive level. If we could have that globally, the industry could still function. Your cell phone would still function. You may not be able to download pornography or movies or sport. In your house, you would have to use a landline. But they would work outdoors, which is where you want them to work. The children laying on their beds would not be able to text each other all night. They would have to pick up a landline and use real words. But the system, there is a way for the system to work and everybody to be able to use it sensibly. And instead of a wire going into your ear or having the phone on your body or holding it here, you can use an air tube like a doctor's stethoscope and hold it away from your body. There are mechanisms that people who carry phones that protect the body from the radiation. There are mechanisms, they are just not used. The patent was taken out by, in fact, the mobile industry to show that they could be made safer. But of course, they don't tell you this because if they tell you, they have to admit that there is an element of danger. So, I'm not saying we have to scrap the industry. All I'm saying is, we have to turn the knob down. That is all. To a level that is internationally agreed. There will be casualties, but there are casualties with road accidents, plane accidents. There are always casualties with everything we do, and there will be with this. But there is a level where the level of casualties is acceptable to the human population, but the ecosystem will be saved. The bees will be saved. We have no transmitters within several kilometers of any beehive. We have no transmitters within several meters of farms where Pollinating insects have to work. Definitely no transmitters on hospitals, schools, old people's homes, which is where most of them are. It, it can be done. Um, there is a way out of this, but I fear, it, like every single international agreement, since, to my knowledge, 1992, to try and protect the environment, the ecosystems, the biodiversity, global warming, every single agreement has failed, or been ignored, or left to fizzle out. And I suspect that if we had an international agreement, because Prime Ministers love to be seen together, they love the photographs, they love all the cameras, and they love to come away to say, look, we're going to save the planet. They go away, and then it is left to fail. And my fear is that this is left to fail. And what we really need is an organisation that can pull the world together, and if we have leukaemia clusters in schools, then somebody is legally accountable. At the moment, they're not. Somebody is legally accountable. And if the government allow a transmitter to be too powerful, the government are put in court and they are tried. And if the person has been made sick, they are sentenced. They must be legally responsible for what they do. That is what we need.